you have an interest in horses and love learning more about horses, the horse industry, teaching, or even managing your own horse business, then you're in the right place. We would love you to join us on our mission, which is to improve the lives of horses around the world through the education of riders, handlers, and trainers. So get comfortable, listen in, and enjoy. Hey, it's Glennis here. Just to let you know that even though the quality in this audio isn't first rate, the information certainly is. Please excuse the audio quality and focus on the education and what you'll learn in this interview. Today, I'd like to introduce you to Hazel Hikins. Hazel's done dressage show jumping and eventing in the past, but now she's specialising as a dressage coach and she's also an A-level dressage judge. So we're going to have some dressage judging questions for her today. How are you, Hazel? I'm fine, thanks, Lynn. How are you? Good, good. Hazel, I understand that you've got a great view there at the moment. You're at a clinic. I am with my own horse, and I'm just watching beautiful young horses being taught. So it's a lovely view. Good, good. Now, Hazel, we usually start people off with their favourite quote. Would you be able to tell me about your favourite quote, please? Yes, favourite quote is "Less is more," and it comes from a guy who used to come over, Edgar Lickvark. He used to come over on a regular basis and train us, and the first one teaches us in Perth, I think, of the training scale for dressage, or for, for all disciplines, actually. Mm-hmm. And that was his, yeah, one of his regular quotes, less is more. Okay, okay. All right, and then his quote, but what were you doing? Because he, he would have used it when he was teaching you, or you've seen him use it in a way when he's teaching others. What were they doing? What was he asking them to do? He was asking, as a rider, to not be so interfering with the horse, I guess, Mm -hmm. to be more in harmony, to achieve better quality. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think the the, the riders sometimes override. We all override, I think, as a a coach. Okay. Often, you know, and maybe our timing of the age is not as good as what it could be. And that's what he used to say, yeah, if you do less as a rider, often you'll achieve more. Hazel, how did you start with horses? What were your first memories? Oh, look, I started a riding school. I had a friend who started riding. We were both 10 years old and off we went. And we, um, I think I spent 20 years at a riding school and we used to go off and do showing and teach people to ride. It was a really good background, actually. Yep. I think when riding schools are very well run, they can be. They can be very community-minded and everyone helps each other a bit and it's great team, you know, just as a team going along and the more experienced, even though the more experienced riders, just to have them there as mentors and, and as goals to aspire to, I think it can be a very good environment for people. Oh, most definitely, yeah. And I was lucky that the people I rode with, the daughter actually rode with Franz Moringa. Oh, wow, yep. So, yeah, so, you know, we were lucky. I think, you know, I didn't realise until later on, but we were lucky at the time that we benefited from that. Yes. From, from her going to, you know, to friends, yeah. Okay, I learned how to flat tail very well because nobody <laughs> else could do it. So when we all went off to a show, I'd be the one that would be there flooding the tails for them. And I was <laughs> playing club then and that sort of thing. Yeah, yes, that was a great yes, start. Yes, okay. All right. Now, you do a lot of judging now. What got you started into judging? Oh, well, that's actually, I have Harry Bolt to blame for that. Okay. Because he came to Perth with his wife when they first came to Western Australia and they offered to do a seminar down at the State Equestrian Centre. And they said, you can come in, but you have to sign up now to become a judge. So I did. Okay, good, good. So you started off and you've just obviously, you've stayed in it because now you're an A-level judge and you don't just go and sign up to be an A-level judge. So you've obviously, yeah, you've obviously enjoyed it. (laughs) What do you think are the keys or the skills that you require to go on to become a judge, an A-level judge? No, just to become a judge, first of all, you know, to be the type of person that's going to enjoy judging. I think that you have to have, of course, theoretical knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's really helped to have ridden, of course, and to be still writing. And to just be really interested. I think you can really help people do by judging. If you can give constructive criticism yep. and offer something to help the riders, then surely that has helped with our sport, even from the base level. Yep. Okay. I actually managed to do my coaching specialist and the A level judging together, and yes. they went hand in hand. So, but to start off with, yeah, I think 
you know, if anybody wants to become a judge, then, you know, have a look what's required and actually go for it because sitting in the car, you learn a lot. Mm -hmm. It's good talking to the other judges and even just comparing scores and things. You can pick up a lot just from the more experienced judges and usually the more experienced judges are happy to help the younger judges coming along. Yep. Absolutely, yeah. Going on and being an A-level judge, that's a bit different and, and a lot of judges start off and don't achieve that. So what's made you that you've sort of kept going as a judge to reach that level? I think the more you get into the dressage scene, if you like, the discipline of dressage, which is training, and you become more interested in how the horse develops as an athlete and how the rider can help that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in Australia, or particularly in the West, we need really, it's hard to say, but from my perspective, I think better riding is what is needed. We have the quality of the horses. Okay. And if we can keep the riding up as well, that's probably more what I see as mm -hmm. a judge, yeah? Yep. Um, the horse, yep. You know, there's some fabulous horses out there. And there's some really nice, ordinary types of horses too. But if we can get better as riders, yeah? Okay, yes. And I think yes. that's, that's the key. Mm. Okay. I All really right. do. Because you've talked about, you've already talked about Edgar Lickbart and Harry Bolt. You you get I know that you have a few coaches going over to help raise the standard. Who else has oh, influenced do, yes. you? Who else has influenced you? Oh, well, of course, Carl Hester. You know, not that he's been to Perth, but I watch YouTube and read all the magazines and his articles, and I have uh, you know I went over to Werribee to watch his dance class. Uh, what he's done for riding is just amazing. Charles is just amazing, and I think. We have so much on hand, so much technology. Um, you know, uh, there's another one, Lila Foray, that came over. I mean, I believe she's coming to Queensland again. But she was fantastic. Yeah. Okay, okay. No, that's good. There's a lady here called Victoria Hamilton, and she's a beautiful rider and breeding her own horses. She's a coach as well, and that's actually where I'm at the clinic today. Yeah. Okay, okay. And just to... Yeah, and what I see is that she really, really enjoy their own horses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I think that I think you have to, don't you? Otherwise, it's just a job. It's got to be. It, there's got to be a lot of enjoyment as well. Yeah. And what about oh, horses? Absolutely. Yeah, horses who've influenced you. What horse do you have there now today? You've got a young horse. He's not here today. He's at home and enjoying himself in the paddock. But mm -hmm. I've I've actually got a little Arab, a very small Arab thoroughbred cross. Mm -hmm. who's working up towards the medium work. Yep. And um, he hasn't been easy, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Now, he's, he's taught me a lot, actually. Any other horses you think that have been just a bit of a standout who've influenced you? Oh, definitely. The first warm blood horse I ever owned. Yep. It actually just passed away a couple of months ago at 30 years old. He was fabulous. Wow. Yeah. He taught me a lot, and I was lucky that I was training with Billy Bun at the time, so we could learn up to all the Grand Prix movements, which was great. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Now, what about, I'm just thinking about judging, right? So thinking about judging, yes. you must see a problem, the same problem again and again. So as a judge, you can only comment on a test. As a coach, you can improve and teach the rider to improve. What's the problem? What would you say as a judge, but what would you do as a coach? Okay, so the biggest problem I see is lack of connection mm -hmm. or it needs more developing, if I can be more positive about that statement. And I think the connection is a bit of a package too and that comes from often quite a basic understanding from the rider, from the riders that do know better, that they're working towards, that they know that it's, Quite often something they're doing or not doing, if they're doing too much of or not doing enough of. Yeah, and I think with the lower levels, you know, with the more basic riders, yep. the position. Mm -hmm. And I think as riders we all need to get more supple, become more fit and, you know, help our horses by sitting better, basically. Yep. But connection, I think, is the biggest problem. And from this clinic still... It's the same here, you know, and we have some good riders here um, yesterday and today, but it's still an honest connection. Okay, okay. 
So as a judge, what sort of comments would you say, you know, because you've got to abbreviate a fair bit, if you see a lack of connection, yes. do you just write lack of connection? If you have a rider that could be more subtle or, or supple, sorry, supple or could be yes. fitter, do you actually say to the rider you could be fitter or do you give them examples of how they're not? Yeah, the submission mark and the rider mark go mm-hmm. hand in hand at the yep. bottom of a test sheet. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah, it would be things like more supple. Yep. It would be more straight. Mm-hmm. And it's not the straightness that's number five on the training scale. It's the basic straight that comes from a horse being supple and, and the contact into both reins. Yes. And, therefore, that will give you the better connection anyway. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, hang on a sec. Let me interrupt to let people know about the horse industry qualifications at onlinehorsecollege.com. If you have a look at the flexible options, there's online theory with practical components that can be completed by video or with a qualified expert in your area. That website again is onlinehorsecollege.com. Thanks. Okay. And then as a coach, what sort of exercises, what are you going to tell the rider? What are you going to do with the rider to get that improvement? Again, coming back to watching the clinic the last couple of days, going back from the circle, on the 20-metre circle, and just checking that it does your whole step into both reins equally. Mm-hmm. Does it bend and flex on a circle? Is it going from the leg to the hand? Those sorts of exercises. And once you've got that, that I think that's, Sometimes we're a bit too impatient and we want to move on and do the exercises a la, you know, the shoulder ins and the travers and the half passes. And we haven't quite got this honest connection. So if we go back to the circle and just say, is my horse really travelling how it should be? Mm-hmm. In other words, is it tracking up and all of those sorts of things? And then go off and do, you know, there's so many exercises. There's great leg build exercises, positions, of course. Yes. Yeah, and yes. then, you know, once you've got that hang of it and the rider sitting in it in a fairly balanced position, then you can go on and do your collecting exercises by shoulder and over there. Mm-hmm. Okay, no, that's good, that's good. How many people are at the clinic today? It's been a pretty full house today. Yeah. It started at half past seven, mm-hmm. so it's probably about 12, I think, okay. 12 yep. lessons. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just and in. everybody, everybody tuning up the yeah. same way in the beginning. They're going on the circle, yep. um, checking that the basics are right, and then depending on the level of the horse, go off and do. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just watched um, yeah. a little while ago a, a six-year-old preparing for. We have Stephen Clark coming over here next weekend. Okay, yes. And he's doing a young horse competition. Yeah, it so was just interesting. To watch a six-year-old who do some half pass and some flying changes. Yep. And the lessee more really came into that lesson because, you know, when she sets up for the movement, yes. but let the horse actually do the movement, then it works better. Yep, yep, okay. All right, what about a book? Do you read, have you got a book that you could recommend for our listeners? Oh, gosh. One of the fabulous ones is that um, balancing, balancing Movement. Okay. And it's about the biomechanics of the rider and how you can – be influential in your core and your seat and in more in harmony. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great book. In that book, just to do with you being more influential, you know, because you talk quite a lot about the fitness of the rider and being more supple. Yes. Is there a recommendation there to ride to get fit or was there like complementary fitness program? It's an interesting thought. I think the more – to get riding fit, you have to ride, basically. Mm. And I think most riders will tell you that, yeah? Mm. But I definitely think to do other other things, a la Pilates or whatever you're interested in, I decided to go to a group fitness program twice yep. a week. And yes. I'm not young, believe me. And I find it's helping. So it's quite interesting. And if you're interested in going to the gym, that's great, go, but I'm not at all. So I would rather, you know... Try something else, sweep harder or, or push the mile around or something like that. Yep, yeah. Yep, but I yep. definitely believe, you know, depends. It's so indiv- such an individual thing, but I really think it helps. Yes. Yeah. And yes. I think we have to look, look at ourselves as athletes too, you know, take mm. care a bit and eat a bit sensibly. And, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah. If we if we want to ride to our best ability. Yes. Yes. Now, looking forward, what are you looking forward to? What does your future hold? Oh, well, I've got a nice young horse coming on. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he'll be a Grand Prix horse, but who knows? Yep. And um, I'd like to improve my riding. That's my ambition at the moment. Yeah. And just carry on helping other people. I very much enjoy doing the protocol days, training days. Yes. Dressage, not yep. always, they're always the official. I think you can really help people improve in the riding within five minutes. It's amazing if you can say one thing. Yeah. And of course, being a coach, that's so helpful as well. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And um, yep. it's what you do in five minutes and then say, would you like to go, you know, moving again or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so that at the moment, yeah. And, and perhaps go see some more. You just you're going to what big competition or something? Yep. I believe up there are having. I think I'm not sure if next year or the year after, but they're having the the big international judges seminar, if you like. Okay. I think you call it. Okay. Yeah. So that would be great because once you get amongst the FEI judges, you know they're also friendly and run ideas and talk about things and mm. you know like there's two big things at the moment. There's taking the high and the low scores off there. They want to bring that in, but they're not sure about it. And the other thing is about uh, there was some a ride, an ex-Australian rider actually that patted his horse on the side of his rib cage and he was eliminated. You know that type of thing. Mm, yeah, mm, so it's quite mm. easy. Okay, yeah. okay. Looking back, then, what's been your proudest moment with horses? I think with that small mud I had yeah. <laughs> and a beetle was in Perth, and we won the state championship. This was you know, a lot of years ago. Yep. And he just said. You ride like a German, and I thought that was a pretty good compliment at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. I think that was one of the proudest moments, yeah. Okay, good, good. I think you're a bit proud too when you were talking about, you know, what you plan to do in the future and your students, and I think there's a bit of pride there as well as a coach, as a coach and as a judge. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. If we can all get better together, that's great. <laughs> Okay. Hazel, would you be able to sum up your philosophy into a lesson today for our listeners, just something that they can take away and think about with, you know, for the rest of the day? If I may, yeah. um, there was a great article in, in the Horse Magazine for the Young Horse Champs from um, Holland, mm-hmm. and it was from um, a quote from Bluvenal, who was in the, I don't know, thousands of years ago. He said about being careful not to annoy him, meeting the horse, Yep. If possible, and not to rob him of his gentleness, since the horse is as the blossom is to the fruit, which once withered never returns. And that really stood out at me, and I just thought, yeah, that's it. And especially having a young warm blood who is so gentle, yep. and I just thought, oh, I've got a really good chance to, you know, maybe get this right. Yes. And, and I guess that's my aim with this horse. But, yeah, just to carry on, um, just be humble about your riding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you need to go and have lunch lessons, go and have it and enjoy it because it really is good fun. Yes, yes. And it's a healthy thing too. We're outside and we're, you know, doing something and enjoy your horse. Yep. Very much enjoy yep. your horse because that's what it's about. Yes. They're just they're such beautiful creatures. Yep. You just want to hug them really, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Now, Hazel, how can people contact you? By um, landline, have a message, and by email, of course. Yes. Okay. And Facebook? You don't use Facebook much? Oh, yes. Yes, Facebook. Oh, well, I just don't have a lot of time, but yeah, yeah certainly on Facebook. Yeah. All right. Look, we'll put those contact details on, and I'd like to say goodbye and thank you very much for your time. It's been very good talking to you. I think getting everything from a judge, I mean, I know that you're a, you're a coach and instructor, but getting it from a judge's perspective is good as well. That's been great. And as we say goodbye, I would love it if you could read out again, I'm starting with, be careful not to annoy him. Oh, okay. Thank you, Glenna. Okay. <laughs> this is from Pluvenal. Thank you. Thank you. Pl- from Pluvenal. Yep. Okay. Being careful not to annoy him, me and the horse, if possible, and not to rob him of his gentleness, since the horse is as the blossom is to the fruit, which once withered never returns. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Okay, thank you, Hazel. Thanks, Glenis. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait, before you go, 
If you're an equestrian coach or a riding instructor, or even if you aspire to be one, have a look now at the free video series for horse riding instructors. It's on horsechats.com. Remember that our comments and instructions are general in nature and do not take into consideration your individual horses or your individual ability and circumstances. If you enjoyed this podcast, then please leave your comment below 